Thanks to everyone who participated in Ditto World, hosted by Adobe in October. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of hands-on, step-by-step tips and tricks based on one of my sessions. This video covers some of the first parts of the session where you get to see FrameMaker's Ditto WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, authoring environment in action. There's a default configuration and setup, and I create a little bit of content to get you started. My name is Bernard, I'm the CEO at Publishing Smarter, and we do a lot of work around content creation, management, and distribution. In the full Adobe Ditto World session, you'll hear both Margie and myself going through and talking about some of the functions that every Ditto editor should be able to perform and what sets FrameMaker aside. In this video, I'll go through and show you a little bit about the author environment in FrameMaker and just compare it against another tool, specifically AEM. Once you launch FrameMaker, you can choose File, New, Ditta, and any one of the different topic types. I'll start with a task. The default workspace that you see might look a little bit like what's here. However, I'm going to go in and use one that Adobe's created specific to XML and structured authoring. In the top of the screen, you can click the drop down and choose any of the options. I'm going to go with XML Structured in order to get started working with Ditta. This is a default workspace Adobe provides, but you can always go in and build your own as well. I find that starting with the blank workspace gives me a canvas with nothing on it so that I can put in exactly what I want and position it where I want it. A must have is the structure and specifically structure view option. This is one of the key things that differentiates FrameMaker from other tools. I'll talk about the structure view later, but I'm also going to open up my element catalog. There's another really cool feature that's available inside FrameMaker for any of the searching you need to do around any action that you want to perform. I'm going to click the magnifying glass, the search. I could also have pressed function seven. Once this opens, I just type in the command or a word close to the command that I want to display. In this case, Typing attribute displays the second option to show the element attributes pod. And I also can see that it's under the view, pods, and edit attributes if I wanted to go through the menu. There's even a keyboard sequence of escape, uppercase E, uppercase A that would access this. So FrameMaker gives you multiple tips and tricks, quick shortcuts in order to get to common functions, and the ability to learn more through this progressive discovery. Next up is a little bit of configuration. I'm going to drag and drop the titles of some of the pods. Structure view first, then elements. Technically, I can leave them floating around on screen. Makes more sense though to dock these. See the blue highlight? That's my cue that I can dock this. Again, notice the blue and the faded elements. I can just keep reorganizing as I wish. After docking all of the pieces, I'm going to resize my elements catalog a little bit as well. I'm running a lower screen resolution on the video here, so I've got to make the most of the real estate I have available. Incidentally, in the top right of my screen, it still reads blank. There is a drop down there. If you click it, you can actually go in and save your configuration. I may do that a little later, but right now, let's start in with some content. I'll click in the document inside the title area. Text is supported inside this element, so I just type the title. In Ditta, it's generally a good idea to add a short description in order to provide additional value beyond the title of the document. So I'm going to click in the short description area and again, type my message. It is pretty much that easy. I'm going to go ahead and add an author and then a command inside the step. So I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. You'll notice a couple of things here. The text is now inserted in step one, specifically inside the command. The prologue is updated with the author. And if you look to the left top of the screen, you'll see that that's reflected in the structure view. Again, FrameMaker's structure view is really powerful and it sets it aside from a lot of other software. Because I'm running such a low resolution, the structure view starts to have a lot of clutter to it. If I was running this in my normal screen resolution, 
I'd be able to see a lot more information. But for the video's purpose, I want to make sure that it's easy for you to see what's happening. Now, on the left side of the step is a small shaded gray downwards triangle. This allows me to expand and collapse the element. I'll do the same cleanup with the prologue. The element's catalog is contextual. You'll see that when I click below the step, the entire list of elements updates to show me only the stuff that is valid in the current location. So I don't have to mess around trying to find the right information that I'm allowed to insert. From this much shorter list, I'll double click step. FrameMaker's template is intelligently set up so that as soon as the step is inserted, the required command is also added. So I can just type in the content. And you don't have to go through and collapse the element every single time you want to add new information. I just click again below the step. Then I double click step, continue to add text and so on. Again, let's skip ahead. That's the core of my task. I can go in, I can save this, I can close it, I can open it in other data editing tools. And one of the questions that I want to address is how FrameMaker compares with other software. And I wouldn't say that it's a better or worse, I'd say it's a different. Just like Coke and Pepsi or a hammer and a screwdriver. What we're looking at is the right tool for the job at hand. Therefore, if we work with FrameMaker and we create our data content, Adobe provides a content management system, specifically AEM, that is fully data featured. So let's go and compare the two when it comes to creating content. This is Adobe Experience Manager, and while it's not the focus of what I'm talking about, it is important to be able to compare and contrast FrameMaker with other data author tools. And again, AEM has a complete and fully functional set of data tools built right into it. Here I have a folder specific to data world, so I'll create some content within it. The basics are really similar to FrameMaker. I create a data topic. I get to choose from the topic types, and again, I'll create a task. When prompted, I add the title. And I can see that the title and the name of the file relate directly to each other automatically. And then I create. I'll open the topic and create a bit of content so that we can match what happens in FrameMaker when we create a task as opposed to what happens in AEM when we create a task. The title is automatically created. And just like FrameMaker, I can click in the paragraph or in the command and start typing. Inside the AEM template, I don't have a short description. Instead, I have a paragraph that's inside the context, and you can see the breadcrumbs in the top left of the screen. I have a task that contains a task body that contains the context, that in turn contains the paragraph in which I've typed. There is no default short description. That's just a matter of configuring a template, though, if that was how you want it to work. I'm going to click where the command is. Now, before I do that, take a look at the screen. You'll notice there is no structure view. There's a limited set of attributes being displayed. This is because the XML web editor for AEM provides only a shell of the data functionality that you might see inside FrameMaker. This tool is geared very much towards contributors, towards people that might have to do some review, make a few minor edits. It is not in the same way as FrameMaker, a completely full-blown data editor. It can perform all of the functions that are required of a data editor, but out of the box, FrameMaker is just an incredibly powerful publishing tool with all kinds of layout and design and features that have been developed over years by Adobe in order to make the structured authoring environment and experience that much easier. Now I can just type and press enter until I've got all of my steps. There is a tags view that's available inside AEM that sometimes can be kind of cool. Again, it depends on your preferences. If you want to see the structure, you can, and of course you can turn that off. The core of the message is that when you're done, you save the file, you tuck it away, and you keep working inside a very quick, friendly, basic interface. But if you need all of the power of FrameMaker, and I'm going to show you more of it, that's when the author experience changes. And we're back in FrameMaker. I'd be remiss not to show you the same function that I just showed you over inside AEM. You'll see under the view menu, element boundaries as tags, and just above that, element boundaries. Let's take a quick look at both. First, boundaries as tags. 
this looks pretty similar to what we saw in AEM. You'll see that because the prologue and the information in the first step are collapsed, they're even hidden away inside the preview of our document. Under the view menu, we could also go in and display just the markup of the tag without the name. This shows you square brackets around a lot of the content, and you can click between those in order to position the insertion point, similar to what I was doing earlier by clicking inside the structure view. Since I have a really powerful structure view, I'm going to actually go and deselect any of the element boundaries. Remember, inside the structure view, you can click between elements. So I'm going to click between the two step elements, and what you're going to see in the elements catalog is the long list of options narrow down in order to guide me as an author to show exactly what is valid. Let's take a quick look at a couple of other things that can happen after I insert a step. I'm going to correct what I did incorrectly, I guess, in the first step. I typed in select file and I manually punctuated it with commas and spaces for new data task. However, I haven't given any semantic markup to that information. It's just another collection of words. Let's resolve that. Those four things are part of a menu cascade. So it's a collection of items that a user would click on to control the interface. And they're all collected into a menu cascade. So I'll start by double clicking menu cascade. The template in FrameMaker inserts the menu cascade and an automatic UI control. I'm going to click under that and add another one because looking at step one, I know there's going to be four file, new, data, and task. And so far I only have one UI control. I double click, you'll see a new UI control, and then I can continue to click and insert additional ones. Let's skip ahead. You'll see that with all four UI controls in the structure view, my document step two actually has symbols after the word file. These are automatically inserted in order to identify and differentiate each UI control and guide the reader through performing the correct steps. Let's go populate the UI controls with more content. You get a much better idea of what this might look like now. Step two reads select file, new, data, task. I've inserted the menu cascade with four UI controls and FrameMaker's automatically adding formatting instructions. As the author, I can work between the structure view and my document view and the element catalog that contextually updates and perform a lot of common actions very, very quickly. And again, I can collapse the menu cascade, for example, once I'm done working with it. If I hold down shift when I click the triangle next to step, I can collapse all of the step elements in one shot. There's no point in having that first step. So I'm going to click in the middle of the word step and delete it. And you'll see that two, three, and four automatically renumber, of course, to one, two, and three. At this point, I've taken FrameMaker, created a brand new data task, used the visual interface in order to create the title and the short description, author information, and create three unique step elements, including the first one. The first one contains within it a menu cascade that has numerous UI controls inside it. FrameMaker automatically formats all of this, and again, it gives me a very guided interface to do some work. Let's go in and take a look at another data topic, specifically a concept. I created a concept earlier, so I choose File Open, and in the dialog, I can double-click that concept. I like using the C underscore, R underscore, and T underscore for things like concepts, references, and tasks, because it groups them together. It's not to say it's the only way or the right way to put together your naming convention, but it's one mechanism that you could use to organize information. Nested inside the concept is a bullet list. So in my structure view, I've already navigated to that location, and you'll see that I can just click in the middle of an LI to select it. You'll see I had two list items, one for Apple and one for Windows. Watch what happens when I expand the triangle beside the list item. I see, in this case, that the platform is MS for Microsoft. In the same way, the Apple might have Mac, for Macintosh. Attributes can have three states to them. They can be collapsed, 
They can be expanded to show only what you've defined, or they can be expanded to show everything. So again, FrameMaker gives you a lot of power inside the structure view. You'll also see that below the structure view is the attributes dialog. And it shows me a list of all of the different attributes that are available for the element, in this case, li. That dialog is configurable, customizable. You can show all. You can show only what is required or what you have specified. You can take the attributes title, drag it around and position it and dock it. And again, at a higher screen resolution, I would be able to take advantage of multiple pods and really configure the entire interface to be exactly what my authoring experience should be. Again, that's the power of FrameMaker. I've just collapsed all of the attributes because I do want to show one more thing that FrameMaker does that most other tools can't do. Because of the way that the structure view is configured, remember the shift click. I can shift click on a list item where I know I've defined an attribute. Watch what happens when I do this. At a glance, I can see that this unordered list has two list items, one which is specific to a platform for the Mac, and the one that I've currently selected, which is specific to the platform for Microsoft. At a glance, I don't see multiple formats and customizations inside my document that I then have to go and click in order to see every attribute. The structure view provides that powerful environment that an experienced data author really wants to take advantage of. This isn't a simple, quick interface that allows somebody to contribute content. This is a powerful software tool geared towards professional creation, management, and publishing of data content. I'd be remiss not to show you this next feature. Having scrolled down, I'm going to take a paragraph and place it inside the unordered list. So it's going to temporarily invalidate my content. I realized I created this paragraph and it should be part of my list item collection. I've used drag and drop and placed the P element, the paragraph, into the unordered list, which of course makes the unordered list unhappy because it should contain list items. So in my element catalog, I'll single click list item and then click change. You've had a chance to see a little bit of everything inside the basics of AEM and FrameMaker and get a quick head-to-head -head comparison. FrameMaker is a much more powerful author environment. It's created to give you this print preview that you can see on screen, to generate PDF and HTML incredibly quickly, to allow you to customize everything through a visual interface. You've seen me create a task from scratch. You've also seen a concept on screen here with a title, short description, author information, a paragraph, and a bullet list. These two documents should be relatively easy if you want to recreate them. And in later videos, based on the session delivered at Ditto World, I'm going to take this further and also show you how you can publish this information, customize the templates, build maps, and share your material quite broadly. Hopefully this has been a useful start to you. Thanks a lot for watching.